I want to add more operations now, but I have to be careful here because this code really does not belong in my controller, okay? Because this is the code of what my app is. It's a calculator, and I'm doing calculations here. So this needs to move into a model class, okay? So now it's time to do MVC here and move this stuff into a model class. So what's our model class going to look like? Let's create it and kind of design an API for it, and then we'll get back and use it here, okay? So to create it, okay, in fact, to create any new file in Xcode, you're going to go File, New, File. Okay, file, new file. And when you go here, it's going to say, what kind of file do you want to create? And of course, we want to create an iOS source file, okay, not watch OS or something. And here we're going to create a Swift file. If we were creating a Cocoa Touch class, like a new view controller, we would go here. But if we're going to create just a model class, we go here. So I'm going to double click. It's going to say, where do you want to put this? I'm going to put it in the same group calculator that all my other Swift files are in. You see, viewcontroller.swift there. I'm going to call it calculator brain because it's going to be the brain of our calculator. It's going to be the model uh, for our calculator. I'm going to click create. Here it is right here. You can see that the very first thing, it imports foundation, not UI kit. Okay? Never import UI kit in a model file because the model is UI independent. So it would never do that. If you find yourself importing UI kit, you're doing it wrong. Okay? So foundation is what we want. Foundation is that core services layer, kind of the basic stuff, non-UI uh, based stuff. By the way, let me show you how you can put different things on each side. So I've got calculator brain over here. What if I want to have my controller still be over here? And you do that with these things at the top. Okay, the top line here is actually changeable. You can pick other things to show. So for example, I can go show my controller here. Okay, that way I can have them both on screen at the same time, which is kind of convenient, especially if I have a class that I'm using in another class. I can see its API here and use it over here. All right, so I'm going to create a new class called Calculator Brain. We know how to do that. Brain, we know how to do that. Okay, class, Calculator Brain. What's its superclass? No superclass, right? Calculator Brain, this model, it doesn't inherit from anything, doesn't need to inherit anything. Okay, so it's just a base class. All right, now let's talk about what its API is. Everyone knows the phrase API. I hope that means the interface through which we're going to be programming using this uh, calculator brain. It's all the methods and properties in it. So um, I'm going to do a little function called set operand, okay, which just takes a double. Okay, that's going to be part of it. So if I'm using my calculator brain, I'm going to set an operand. Then I'm going to have another function in here called perform operation which is going to operate on that operand. And the argument there is going to be a string, which is the mathematical symbol. Okay? And then lastly, I'm going to have a var, which is the result of the operation, which is going to be a double. And I'm going to do something interesting here. Um, instead of just having this be a public var that could be set and got, because the setting of this doesn't really make sense for anyone using my calculator brain to set this. I set it internally, okay, because of form operation. So I'm actually going to make this computed and only implement the get side of it, okay? I'm not going to implement the set. So now this becomes a read-only property. Do you, do you all remember another read-only property we used last time? Current title and button. Okay, so current title and button is a computed read-only property in button. That title, that current title, is probably gotten from a UI label or something that the button is using to draw its title. Okay, it comes from somewhere else. That's why it's computed. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing here. So this is how you can make a property be read-only to the callers. Okay, yeah. So can we use the get for comparison, not just for assignment? <coughs> like with the call equal sign? Okay, so the question is, is the get used for comparison? Well, comparison is actually quite interesting in Swift. Um, the equals equals operator is like a function, and it takes those two sides as arguments, and those two sides have to implement certain methods if they want to be comparable. Okay? Now, we're not, we're not far enough along in terms of our understanding of Swift to see exactly how that works, um, but the answer to your question succinctly is no. The get really doesn't have anything to do with equality. Equality is just a function that is different, okay? All right, so uh, I'm going to return zero for right now, okay? Um, just to get rid of my little uh, error there. But eventually we're going to have to implement this uh, internally and make it work. Now, I want to talk a little bit about APIs right here. 
Okay? So far, every method and property we've done in this whole class has been essentially public, meaning any class can call any of the methods in any of the classes we created. Okay? For example, all of our controller vars okay, and functions could all be called by some other class. Now, that's bad. Okay, that's bad. For example, the display value, we wouldn't want some other class setting the display value in the calculator through this controller because we manage that display value by what our model calculates, right? So this is internal implementation. In fact, all of this is internal implementation of our controller. We do not want other classes to be able to call it. Unlike these three, which are external. Okay? They, we want people calling these in calculator brain. That's how our calculator brain works. If people couldn't call this, they couldn't even use the calculator brain. So how do we specify that difference between something that should be called by other people or not? We do that with the private keyword. So I'm going to add private, okay, this private keyword right here, to all of my functions and methods over here. I, I don't, this is not really part of Swift again. This is kind of an Xcode thing, so I put it after that. Um, but otherwise, we put it there, and we're going to put it for all of these. We're going to make all of these be private. And as you program, okay, you're going to see that one of the evaluation criteria on your homework is that you properly make things private when they should be private. And I generally would err on the side of making it private. It's a lot easier to make something private and go back later and decide to make it public than to leave something public, have a whole bunch of code start using it, and then decide, no, no, I want that to be private. Uh, then you break all those other people. So err on the side of private first, and then making things public. Okay. Now, it's actually possible to look at something and see what its public interface is by going up here to the top and picking generated interface. This will show you the public API of the class in the main window on the left there. So we're going to look at the public API of Calculator Brain. You can see that it has set operand, perform operation, and result. Notice this looks just like current title, right, where it's saying this is a read-only thing. We don't see any implementation here. This is purely the API. Okay, it's no implementation here. Also notice this says internal. You would think this might say public, okay, but there's actually a slight difference between internal and public. Internal means it's public within your module. Public would mean it's public to everyone in other modules. So consider UIKit. UIKit has hundreds of public methods that we can call, but it also has hundreds if not thousands of internal methods that only other UIKit classes can call between themselves. We don't even know what they are. Okay, so, but for your purposes, since you're always going to be working in the module, which is your app, internal means public, basically. Let's go look at our controller now, and let's look at its public API. Okay, so here I selected it. We look over here, and it says, oh, there's only one public thing. User is in the middle of typing. I didn't mean that to be public. I wanted that to be private, too. I just forgot to put the private on there. So if I go back over here and say private, okay, then you'll see it goes away. So now we have no public API here. Now, it's still completely usable because in Interface Builder, uh, we can wire up to this controller and make it appear in a tab bar controller, all those things. We can do all that without having any of the internal methods here be public. Okay, so I'm going to go back to my, oops, sorry, go back to my brain over here. Got my controller over here. All right, so I got brain and controller. So let's think about how we can use this model over here. Okay, we haven't implemented this yet, but we've defined its public API. So how can we use that over here? Well, we really want to replace all this business with using our model, right? Because this is where we were doing model things, calculations. So we don't want that, okay? We want to get rid of that, and we want to start using our model here. Well, to have a model in our controller, we need to be able to talk to it, that big green arrow, okay? So we need a private var, which I'll call brain which is going to be a calculator brain, okay? And this is the var that we're, it's going to create our, we're going to create our calculator brain, and we're going to talk to it to do all the calculations, okay? So this is just that big green arrow I showed you on that, those previous slides where the controller talks through this to get to the model. Now, um, how about creating this thing? Where do we create this? Well, you can see that we have an error up here. No initializers again. That's because this var, like any other, has to be initialized. And I'm going to create a calculator brain here. And to do that, I have to call one of its initializers. And every time you create a new class, you get one free initializer, which is an initializer that takes no arguments. Okay? kind of the basic initializer. So I'm using that calculator brain initializer. It came for free. 
Uh, I don't have anything that I need to initialize anyway, so uh, that's perfectly fine. Okay, so I've created it. Now, notice that this right here, do we need this? No, because Swift can infer that brain is a calculator brain from that equal sign right there. Okay, so we do not want to put colon calculator brain there. All right, so now that we have this brain, okay, and it's created here, we can use it, use its public API right here to make things work. Well, one thing we know is that when the mathematical symbol comes through here, we want to ask the brain to perform that operation. Okay, so we're going to pass that mathematical symbol as the operation. We know that. We also probably know that after it's done performing the operation, we probably want to put in the display the result, the brain's result, this thing right here, right? And also at the beginning of the perform operation, if we're in the middle of typing a number, we better set that number as the operand for the calculator to work on. If we go 235 square root, we've got to put that 235 in as the operand for the brain. So we better say if the user is in the middle of typing a number, then brain set operand to be whatever's in the display. You can see even here, having this display value thing makes our code read really beautifully. Okay, we could probably put this inside this if because no need to set it false if it's not, if it's unless it's already true. Okay, so that's it. That's all we need to do to hook our model up to our controller. Okay, and we've removed everything in our controller that has to do with actually calculating. We've basically given it all off to the the model to do. So now we have to implement this. Okay, we've got to implement this brain over here. I'm going to make that be the main. Uh, window here, and how are we going to do that? Well, I'm going to have a data structure here for my brain, which makes pretty much sense, which is going to be private, which is going to be called accumulator. It's going to be a double, and it's going to accumulate the result. Okay, as operations are performed, it's accumulating the result. Okay, anyone who knows how a calculator is built, it has internal <coughs> accumulator. So this is our accumulator. Um, notice that I, as soon as I put this in here, I get this error again. Calculator brain has no initializers. That's because I don't initialize this. So I'm going to say this equals 0.0. .0. Once I do that, I do not need this because 0, 0.0, Swift always infers that, or any something dot something, it always infers it to be a double. Okay? So that makes this be a double, you see? If I made this no dots, just zero, then it's going to infer this as an int. Okay, so good thing to know there. So now that I have my accumulator, the result is always just the current state of my accumulator. So that's the easy implement a result. And same thing, when someone sets the operand, that kind of resets my accumulator to be whatever that operand is. Okay, so those are all easy to implement. So that just leaves this guy, perform operation. That's the heart of my model. That's the thing that's really going to do some calculation. Now, I could, right here, just go back to what I was doing in my controller, which is to uh, have a, some if-then-elses here, or actually I'm going to use switch, okay? So switch is the same as in other language, but much more powerful in Swift, and also much more important in Swift, as you will see, okay? Switch uh, is a very important thing in Swift. So I could switch on the symbol that's legal to switch on a string, okay? And I just put the cases that I want to try. So we have, for example, pi. And if pi happens, I want to set my accumulator equal to pi, okay? If it was, for example, uh, square root, let's go do that. My square root symbol back, here it is. So if we had square root, then I'm just going to say that my accumulator equals the square root of the accumulator, okay? So this is basically getting us back to exactly where we were before, but now we have a model. Notice we have an error here. That's because one thing about switch, you must consider every possible value of this thing you're switching on. Now, this is a string, so it has infinite possibilities, okay? Now, we could spend the next few years saying case A colon. No, we don't want to do that. Instead, we're going to put default break. So default means if you can't match any of these other ones, then just break out of this, okay? Now, notice my indentation's gotten a little wonky here. I'm going to teach you something fun. If you select a curly braced region, including your whole file, and hit Control-I, 
it'll reformat it, okay, relay it out. And I strongly recommend that when you turn your homework in, you select all and do control I, okay? That way you'll be using the default indentation. Even if you prefer something else, use the default one because people reading your code are going to be able to understand it better, okay? And believe me, you'll adjust to whatever indentation indentation style this thing enforces on you, okay? If you start getting, if you're a computer scientist and you start getting religious about things like indentation, uh, you're headed down a pretty rocky road, okay? Because when you go out and work in the real world, you're going to have companies that say, this is the way we do it. Get used to it. And if you sit there whining, I don't like to do it that way, well, you probably get fired, okay? So don't do that. So here we're just going to let the Xcode uh, do our indentation for us. So this is all we need to do right here. Okay, this is a full implementation. We can go back and run our app, and it's exactly the way it was before, but now we're using a model. Okay. So here we go. Let's try four or five. That's working. Square root. That looks like, like it's working. We'll just be sure by picking a number we know the square root of. Pi seems to work. Square root. Okay, so we're back to where we were. That's nice.